All right, let's finish up with some of the styling. Uh, I'm just gonna focus on this part here with our total revenue. Uh, so quickly jump back into your Visual Studio code and scroll all the way down to your CSS part. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add uh, some different styling and we added uh, some IDs before. Uh, so let's start using those and that's total revenue is one of them. And I'm just gonna copy this because it's almost the same name. So copy those twice and tap them in, oops, like this. So we have total revenue for the first one, then we have total revenue text. Uh, well, I guess that's up there. Um, and then we have total revenue text total. And these, I'm gonna move this down because that's gonna be confusing for myself. Uh, but yeah, these are the, the three areas and they were all IDs, that are, well, is why we're using the hashtag. But we're just gonna do some, uh, some slight CSS for this. Uh, we could also use, uh, par partly use Udify's own, but uh, we'll, we'll do some standard CSS as well. So let's do padding and let's do 20 pixels and let's do, that's all the way around, let's do 10 for right side, let's do 20 for bottom and zero for the left page. So this was moved in and we get a little bit more space here. Great. Uh, we also want to use display flex here. So we can uh, use some of the, the things around this one, right? Awesome. So the next one we want to do is we want to have the text area, which is up there as well. Let's set up some display flip, flips, flips, flex again. So we can use the things here. And we want to reset the margin to zero. So let's do, see if that does anything. For, whoops, I just did an update. I didn't mean to. Uh, old. And there we have the reset. It was a little bit higher before, so not the same amount of space, space on the top part and the lower part. Great, so that's the margin part. Let's gonna do some justify content here. So we're going to create space between um, the, the two elements. So the, uh, the total revenue and this one here. Um, we're going to do font, uh, what's it called, font, uh, what's it called, font weight, I think, yeah, no, font style, there we go, font style, and we're going to set up italic, so it's uh, cursive. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a width, so it knows uh, the width that we're working with. So these are the things we're going to use for the text, now you can see it popped over here, so it's italic, we have space uh, between the two elements, if we put space around, it would create uh, some empty space over here and some empty space, so put them a little bit close together and create some stuff. But we won't want that because we want it to be to the edge and follow the padding from the other one. Great. So last thing we're going to do is we're going to do some text decoration. Um, not with a capital T and I changed the form. We want to do an underline for it because it's a like an... Uh, oh, I did it again now. Uh, so here we have the total amount, but we usually write it with two lines, right? Um, or separate it with two once it's the actual product. So we can do this. This is not the best solution, maybe there's a better one, but I don't care because I did it. And we're gonna set it up with uh, just an extra border so it looks like this. This is, again, this is not optimal, right? But it still works. Uh, and then font weight to just have it bold. And we don't really want this one down here to, not italic, style. We don't want this one to be um, italic. We just want it to be normal. Only this one over here needs to be italic. So now we have uh, underlined this and we create our revenue and we create some uh, CSS new. For this to look like this over here, you see there's a little bit difference between the two here, but not a lot. We have order numbers. We can change the value with a class and just add the color incomplete or complete or whatever in progress. Um, and so on and so on to make everything look. Uh, and again, if you were to do more things, just go through your code and remove things you don't use. So this is like the previous version we used. Um, start removing things you don't use. Do you use this discrease number here? No, then delete it. Uh, I didn't spend time in the videos to do this because there's a lot of things to cover. But if you don't use the functions, then delete them. You don't need them. Uh, it just takes up more space in the code. So start going through your code and see, well, do I really need this anymore? No, probably not. So you can delete them. Uh, you can do this for all and you can start separating your components a little bit better than I have already. Um, so for example, menu, you can separate that into two different. Uh, you can create one for the menu items and one for the basket. So separate them into smaller components. I haven't used time on that as well. Uh, but since you're using store, uh, the Vuex store here, it's really easy to start separating because we just 
we just use these getters and setters and uh, where do you go? Uh, out down here. And there we go. Uh, we just use the getters here from the store to attract the data, to grab the data we need, and it's going to update real time because that's what Vuex does. So that's one of the things you can do uh, to start improving or continue working with your system. There's many thing, more things you can do with this uh, if you want. This is you can create, for example, in here. Uh, you can maybe not for the bagels part, but if you're creating some sort of other thing, you can create a like a heart for favorites. So you can create an array for favorites, or you can add a another field in here that says favorites. If this is true false, then you add this to a new array and then you can create a another page that only shows or like or just uh, do a v if you click it then you just show uh, favorites and so on and so on. So all these small things you can do to continue improving your skills with programming. Now what I want to do for some of the last things is I want to go back to this one. So I don't remember this is one of the things I showed in the first videos about the structure of the page and what we want to do. And it's not entirely the same, but many of the things are, right? So this is the shop. This is sort of looking like it should. This is also sort of. We didn't do total revenue and today's revenue. We can also continue with that. So we have this one up here. Um, and this is not how I set it up. I just punched it in, uh, punched it in. I just typed it in so it looks uh, like this, but we're, we're almost at this point. I didn't, once I actually started doing this, uh, and this is a pure design, I didn't, I saw no need for having the price and the bagels in here because I don't really care about that. I just want to see the completed order numbers and then if I want to, I can create somewhere I can actually see the specific of the order if I want to. But what I want to go to quickly, and I need to update my XD apparently, is I want to go back to my Moscow model. Um, to see if we covered everything we wanted from this. This is again, this is why we have this one. So we have the LiPo theme and we can discuss that. We have a draw navigation, yes, we have orders, great. And we have persistent, we have admin, we can remove, we have an order, uh, current, we're able to switch stages, which we just completed. Um, and we, this is just what we done in that, whoopsie daisy. Uh, in the last couple of videos, total price of order and basket, we can edit existing products. We have revenue, total revenue. Uh, we can remove an archive and order, and we can upload image, total revenue over time, and we didn't create a checkout uh, stages for the guest if you want to. So if you want to do, if we were to cover this, oh, there's more here. Uh, if you want to do those, I would probably recommend looking into the cloud functions for uh, the users um, inside of, where to go, uh, inside of Firebase here. So we can set up functions here to control the user. Uh, and then we can, similar to what we've done with the current user, we can, if it's part of the admin, uh, if it has an admin tag, uh, like a field here that says admin is true, then we show different things as well. So when we log in, we can cre actually create not only for an admin login, but also for a guest login. So you know this from standard web pages, web shops, and so on. You can log in as your user with your email and things like this. So things like this you can also set up and continue working on, but I've seen two different ways of doing it, uh, one using functions and one not using cloud page, uh, fire, Firebase functions. And to be honest, I found that the ones with the function work best. Um, so you can definitely look into this. Another thing is, if you want to, is I have, again, in order numbers, I was just using a uh, increment here, right? It doesn't really work. Uh, as you can see, order number one. Uh, and if I go do another here in menu, so bam, bam. And then here we have an order number five suddenly, right? It's because it's doing the auto increment from where the system has cached. It starts from zero and goes up. Um, so there are something called distributed something uh, in, in, in here in the documentation that you can also look into to create this. I haven't have had time to do this. But for now, this is uh, what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll continue with uh, adding to this web shop here. But this is uh, hopefully gave you a good introduction to how you can use both Vuex and Beautify. Uh, what we else? Vuex, we used uh, Firestore, Firebase. We also use the storage and everything here. So hopefully you learn uh, a lot, some things from this, uh, these 80 something videos and hopefully I didn't bore you too much. All right, so hopefully see you in a new season with something else.